Hi, how's it going? Um, here is a compilation of some of the advice that I have regarding your topic, but I had some questions too. So if we want to talk more via email, that's fine. I can meet with you over Zoom um, or we can just keep on um, keep on keeping on. So let me show you what I've got so far. So I've been just taking notes in one note. Um, so symbolic interactionism, I was just unclear on that because I'm familiar with like social constructions and apparently this is like a, a very small version of that to some degree but it depends on who you talk to so i found i think this was like the khan academy symbolic interactionism so that's what i was going off of and it's a really cool video um so i'm going to um i'll send that to you so if for what it's worth if it helps um but i also did some searching for symbolic interactionism um and then mental illness and schizophrenia. And let me show you some of the approaches that I could take and some of the approaches that I would recommend as you go into these things that you're particular in, particularly interested in. Okay, so if you hear yelling, by the way, um, I'm in a garage and it's not insulated, so the kids are playing next door. So <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but they're like, rah! <laughs> so um, let me show you one way of approaching it, which isn't necessarily what I'd recommend, but it's something you could look at. So from the Merit Library homepage, if you put in this whole list of stuff, this is everything that you mentioned in a search. So this first chunk is symbolic interactionism. The reason that I stuck it in quote marks is because I wanted symbolic and interactionism to stick together. So um, whenever it searched for this, it would search as this is a complete search string. And this works out on the open web. And they put it in quote marks because if, if somebody said something, you could put that whole string of what they said in quotes and it would search for that or song lyrics or, you know. So out of the whole catalog, it's looking for symbolic interactionism. And then after that, when I have the and, the and means and then search for one of these two things, mental illness or schizophrenia. And I put it in um, brackets, parentheses, um, that's called nesting. And if you go to advanced search, you don't have to do that. It would just be like one line after another one. Uh, but mental illness or schizophrenia. And then if you search through everything, I'll show you what options you get. There's articles, books, book chapters. So here's the question that I had. Is there really something that's going to show up for all of these things together? Um, or is that going to be too narrow? You get to decide. And I think for this class, you were supposed to look at um, peer reviewed articles and things like that. So if you just go into the articles, there's a, a few hundred to go through. But as I looked through them, I was I wasn't convinced that it was hitting everything that we were looking for. Having said that, it might it might work for you. So the concept that you have, if you think of it um, like a ball um, and maybe like a sticky ball, maybe like a ball of, of ice cream or something like that, these are the things that you think of and these are the concepts and this is your narrative and this is the whole paper that you write. And as that ball rolls through all of the points that you want to make, you might pick up something that like, a, an, a, to expand the ice cream metaphor, you might pick up like an Oreo cookie bit or you might pick up a gummy bear. And those things support your original ideas. So you don't have to find an article that says everything that you want to say, because you're already going to have said it. But each one of these articles is going to have like a different point that it's supporting. So if you just have an article on symbolic interactionism, that is okay because it's just that one little thing that's supporting maybe one small part of your argument. And there's going to be tons and tons of things. So you might just do one about symbolic act interactionism, or you might do several, but you could narrow down to just peer review journals and you could see what's going on. Whoa. So think of that as like a little Oreo cookie bit. When you go to one of those, um, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. You pump your own froyo and then you put on the toppings and then you weigh it and it's like $27. <laughs> One of those places. Um, 
so there's all sorts of different things that you could apply to that. How do you want to approach that? Um, you have 11,000 choices. So I would say, look at symbolic interactionism by itself. Is there a context that you're interested in? So mental illness, schizophrenia is a concept by itself, but you might um, think of like, what are you interested? What's the context? Is it with a particular community? Is it with a particular um, way that people interact with each other? So maybe like in school. Um, so you might do that. You could do symbolic interactionism and peers or friends. So do you get the idea where you're, you're taking symbolic interactionism and looking at it by itself? And then you're going to look at mental illness or schizophrenia all by itself. So that narrows it. No, that doesn't narrow it down very far at all. <laughs> Symbolic interactionism and unauthorized file sharing. What is going on with that? So you can be more specific and you can narrow it down that way. I want to try and find something that has friends in the title, though. There's mobbing. Let me show you advanced search. Let me show you a trick we can do to narrow this down. Oh, it saved it for me. So, like, I want peers and friends. I want that to be, like, one of the main topics. So what you can do is move on to the next line, and I'll put that there. And I don't think it has to be in parentheses when I'm doing advanced search. But in this one, I can say I want it to be in the title of the thing. And I want it to be in articles. Because schizophrenia, mental illness, and that symbolic interactionism, it sounds like people talking to each other and negotiating things. Like what's real, what matters. So this is really good. This is kind of what I was looking for. This is what I think would be valuable to you, uh, because you hear here's like rejection, peer rejection. That's a that's a huge deal. Um, is it cool? Is it normal to have mental illness, or is it something that you have to hide? Um, so that would be a great article for that. By the way, if you want to see any of these articles, you click on this full text available. And that will look for the full text of that article in one of our databases. And sometimes it'll just put you in the full text, and sometimes it'll say, oh, keep on trying, keep on trying. So I just wanted to run through one article just to show you. So here it's saying, well, try one of these databases. I don't know how it keeps track of the title of the article going through all of these forwarded links. <laughs> so we'll see if it does. Fingers crossed. <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. Woo! Check it out. That's so cool. Okay. When you have a scholarly article like this, how do you get one of those Oreo cookies and stick it on your, your ice cream scoop of rhetoric and discourse and narrative? and synthesis, where you're synthesizing all these things. Um, these scholarly articles, let me move my head. These scholarly articles are gonna go on for pages and pages and pages and pages, but they all follow a format um, that's similar. Um, the title is gonna be really descriptive. The abstract is going to be everything boiled down to what those main points are. And then, um, this one's in Spanish, but Oh, actually, it's it's half Spanish, half, half English. How fascinating is that? Um, you can translate these things in Google Translate, but they're going to come to the point really quickly, and then they're going to spend like seven or eight pages talking about their methodology and how they discovered things and how they did their research and blah, 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 blah. Oh, here's their methodology. So if you read like the first page, maybe the first page or two, and nothing is jumping out at you, then that's one to dismiss. But here we can do, um, 
children with peer relationship problems. I'm covering my mouth. This could be something, or you could look for that symbolic interactionism. Uh, but the whole article has that in the in the keywords. But it says children with peer relationship problems lack the information needed to make realistic judgments about themselves because being excluded, they lack the opportunities to practice this important social skill. So that construction, that idea where you're you're figuring out, you're negotiating um, what matters, what's real, and and what's what's the value of different things. So you could you could say something like people with schizophrenia or people suffering from mental illness often have to negotiate with their peer group or their friends on how valid or threatening or positive these experiences can be or negative or something like that. Um, for example, and then you list this quote and then your APA citation and Bob's your uncle. You have this, you've completed that citation. I hope that makes sense. I talked really fast. Uh, but you shouldn't feel like you have to understand all of the concepts and the methodology and everything. You're just, you're, that's why you're citing the article. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, so this database is good, um, but let me show you another one. We could even go into communication database. Let's try that. So under databases, you can go to a database by name or by subject. Ooh, communication sciences and disorders. That might be a good one to go into as well. So these are topics of databases, and these are the names of specific databases. So the one in yellow at the top is going to be the one recommended by the librarian. I recommend this one. So on this one, if we, and I always misspell schizophrenia. This one, I'm going to look up schizophrenia. Oh, let me just do that first. If you're just looking that up, first of all, they have a whole bunch of different things going on that you they're recommending. But if you just look up in communication, in communication scholarship, schizophrenia, and see how many we get, 234. If you wanted to, you could read between the lines. You know probably more about schizophrenia since you picked that as a topic. You must have some interest in it. What are some of the things going on with that outside of what might normally be known, especially with that symbolic interactionism, like how do people talk about it? So it could be, um, and this is, so there's like mediated portrayal, that one might be good. Um, I'm looking for, oh, that's fascinating. Auditory, verbal, hallucination, and self-monitoring. Storytelling. Storytelling is a way of making sense of something, but it's also portraying something. It's, it might be like a positive rhetoric. But what you can do is you can add what's a quality of schizophrenia that people struggle with. And let's see, what did I put on here? Oh, I put relationships. So in the last one, I did or peers or friends. So you could do that too. Peers or friends. So say, for example, we were looking at that same angle again. Again, fingers crossed. And there's 38. So impaired interpretation of others' behavior. So that is like on the, on the point of the person who is suffering schizophrenia, how do they negotiate that symbolic interactionism might be impaired. That might be something that you would have to say. There's news that helps people. That's more of a social construction. Communication consulting. Narratives, that's storytelling, where people share their stories. Might be a lot of good ones in here. Second language acquisition. There might be some good ones in here. Um, these are pretty easy because it's got full PDF, full text. So here's your rule of thumb. Develop the things that you want to say. And as you discover these articles, read at least the abstract and see if there's like a point that you wanted to add to your narrative or 
um, highlight and support a point that you've already made. And then you cite those just as a quote or a point um, here and there as you go, as you cite those articles. And you should be in good shape. I think this is a great place to start. Um, let me know how it goes. Um, and I will keep my eye open on email. Have a lovely day. It looks like it's sunny outside. So have a good one.